Church. I want to remind you that tomorrow at 11.30 a.m. on Labor Day is our big online Zoom picnic. I hope you're going to be a part of it. So, it's time to go worship right now, so I'll see you inside. Welcome to the Little Brown Church. I hope you've had time to prepare your elements so that we can take communion together later. Let us begin in prayer. Loving God, we thank you for this time of community and this time of love. This time when we can retell and relive the life and the lessons and the stories of your son, Jesus Christ, who taught us to love and who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. The psalm reading today is Psalm 143, verse 8. Let me hear of your steadfast love in the morning, for in you I put my trust. Teach me the way I should go, for to you I lift up my soul. Amen. This is my song, the 
As we come to our time of prayer, I'd like to do something just a little bit differently today. I'm going to begin the prayer, but then I'm going to leave a time of silence where in your homes you can speak out your concerns or you can hold them within your hearts or you can post them on the comment section below. Let us go to prayer. Loving God, we thank you for this time when, as a community, we can come together and give thanks for your gifts. We thank you for the gift of this church and for the gift of your love. And today, we lift up these concerns. We know that even before we came together, you knew our concerns, but we thank you for the opportunity to come to you as a community and place them at your feet. It's in your son's holy name we pray. Amen. Hi, I'm Claudia Tamaliwan. I'm the children and youth director. I've actually been a member at Church of the Valley for over 20 years. I know crazy. During that time, I have been in Christmas shows, staycations, and lots of camp retreats and church camp. One year in particular, my family was kind of in a bind. My mom didn't really think I should be going to church camp since we were, could use that money for other things. So I said, you know, it's going to have to pass because I can't afford it. That week, I got a phone call saying, the church is giving you a scholarship. All of it is free and you can go have fun. It was a blast, not just because it was church camp, because that camp in particular, I almost fell off a cliff. I completely scraped my knee, had a bloody nose, and during worship almost passed out. But after all of those wonderful things happened, I felt called. I felt called to go into ministry. While holding my bloody nose and my not broken, but felt like it was broken leg, I could feel the Spirit of God. I came back to my church family the following week. I told our then children's director, Pastor Michael, and he gave me a hug, and being somebody who had watched me literally grow up was like I knew it. Your donations, that's what they go towards. Sending kids to camp to have that moment with God. They go to goldfish and apple juice in the morning so that our kids, when they say they're starving, actually can get some food. Your donation goes right now to these. These are the cards that I send out for birthdays, um, Easter, you've got this, and I'm sorry that life sucks right now. So even if you can only give a little bit, just think you're paying for a stamp. And if you can give a lot more, well, that donation is going towards somebody's camp and maybe somebody else will feel called to go down their new spiritual journey. There are many ways to give. You can come here and drop off your donation in the offering box. You can go to covtoday.org and pay through PayPal or you can mail it in. But it's all important and it keeps us going. And now at this time, I invite you to collect your elements so that we can commune together. Let us go to the table. And when they were all gathered in one place, after giving thanks, he took the bread and broke it and said, Take, eat, each of you. This is my body. Let us take the bread together. Then he took the cup and said, This is the blood of the new covenant poured out for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. Let us take the cup. Let us pray. Loving God, we thank you for the opportunity to come to this table each and every week. And we thank you for the opportunity to receive the love that it always holds. It's in your son's name we pray. Amen. The scripture reading for today is Romans 13, verses 8 through 10. Owe no one anything except to love one another. 
For the one who loves another has fulfilled the law. The commandments, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not murder, you shall not steal, you shall not covet, and any other commandment are summed up in this word. Love your neighbor as yourself. Love does no wrong to a neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfilling of the law. Amen. Now, I've told you many times before that I like to cook. And I've been doing a lot more cooking during this pandemic time than I have in the past. And I'm sure a lot of you have been doing the same. And the type of cooking that I've been doing is very different this year. What I mean is, normally during this time of year, normally during the summer, I would be cooking some very light meals, or maybe even grilling chicken and veggies out in the backyard. But boy, the meals that I've been making lately have been a bit heavier than that. Uh, they've been the type of meals that I might usually make in the winter. They are the type of meals that we might call comfort food. Now, if you happen to be a friend of mine on Facebook or Instagram, uh, then you might have seen some of the posts that I've been putting up from, of these comfort meals. I guess these days, comfort food can really bring some comfort for, from the things that are, are happening in our world. Unfortunately, I found that it also can bring on 10 extra pounds. Anyway, I, I really like making all types of food, and I've gotten better at cooking over the years. And yes, part of it is, is practice, and part of it is experimenting with different foods, but there are a couple of other things that make us all better cooks, and they are the tools and the ingredients that we begin with. I mean, there is a great importance in the quality of the ingredients, the freshness of the vegetables, the, the quality of the meat, if you eat meat, and a good variety of herbs and spices. But it's not just the food itself. The tools with which we cook the food can make a big difference in the meal. A good set of sharp knives and a, and a nice cutting board, a, a wonderful set of pots and pans, and fine cooking utensils can really make a huge difference in the way the meal turns out. When we begin with the tools that are needed to make a really good meal, it can become very difficult for us to mess up. No matter what meal we're trying to make, odds are that it will come out right if we begin with a solid foundation. Well, you may be asking why I'm talking about food when in today's scripture, Paul is talking about love. And although I do love food, that doesn't happen to be the connection. Today's passage begins, Owe no one anything except to love one another, for the one who loves another has fulfilled the law. And then we're reminded of a few of the Ten Commandments. Thou shalt not commit adultery, murder, steal, covet. Then Paul says that these and any other commandment are summed up in this word, love your neighbor as yourself. Love does no wrong to a neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfilling of the law. In other words, Paul is reminding us that if everything we do comes from a place of loving our neighbor, if each action we take, if each decision we make, if each and every moment we are seeing one another through a lens of love, then we are free from the possibility of breaking those other commandments. Because love does no harm. A moment ago, I said, when we begin with the tools that are needed to make a really good meal, it can be difficult for us to mess up. Well, the same goes here. When we begin with a solid foundation, when we begin with the tools that are needed, that being a loving heart and loving our neighbors as ourselves, then it becomes very difficult for us to mess up. When we begin from a place of loving our neighbors as ourselves, we will find ourselves exhibiting kindness and compassion, not because we were taught to be kind and to be compassionate, but because it is the only response that we know. It is the only behavior that we know. This past week, I was standing and waiting in a parking lot. And it happened to be a parking lot of a medical center of offices and a pharmacy and medical facilities. And it was a fairly large lot, a two-story lot, uh, for visitors and patients and other people picking things up. But then there was also this other section 
of about a dozen handicapped spaces. And that section was located right in front of the doors, the front doors of this building. And while I was standing there, ambulances and transport vans kept coming in one after another and using the handicapped spaces and taking patients into the building in, on either gurneys or in wheelchairs. And I was standing between the two lots. The general lot was right behind me and the handicapped lot was right in front of me. And I happened to be standing at the head of a handicapped space that was empty. And after standing there for a few minutes, I suddenly saw a woman pull, pull into the lot in a large sedan. And she pulled her car into the handicapped space that was in front of me. And she turned on her hazard lights and proceeded to walk into the building. I couldn't help but notice that her car had no sign of a handicapped sticker or a placard. And leaving her hazard lights on was a pretty big giveaway that she probably really wasn't supposed to be parked there. She was gone for a few minutes, and when she returned, she got into the car and she began to pull out. And we made eye contact, and I'm pretty sure that she thought she knew what I was thinking. I had debated whether or not to say something to her before she got into the car, but um, she got in so fast, I didn't have time to make that decision. Well, as she backed her car out of the space, suddenly she put her car into park and she jumped out. And she yelled to me, what are you going to do with that? And I, I, I said, with what? And she said, that video that you're taking of me, are you planning on, on shaming me on social media? And I said, no, I, I'm not. I didn't tell her that although I was holding my phone in my hand, I wasn't recording her, but rather I was playing Candy Crush Soda. So I said, no, I'm not planning on doing that. But then I knew that this was an opportunity that I could remind someone about how to love their neighbor as themselves. I told her what a poor decision I thought it was to park in a handicapped space, especially in a medical center. I reminded her of how hard it is for people in wheelchairs and those with other walking aids to sometimes get out of their cars. And that's why available handicap slots are so important. And I pointed out the ample parking just steps away. At first, all of her responses had solely to do with herself. I was only gone a few minutes. I could see my car from where I was if I had to come move it. But then I pointed out to her all of the people around us being pulled out of ambulances and vans who couldn't walk on their own. And she actually took a moment and looked around. And then I saw something change in her. As she looked around at the people being taken inside on wheelchairs and gurneys, I felt a change in her heart. And she said, you're right. I was just thinking about myself. I was in a hurry. And I didn't think about how it would affect anyone else. I could see that at least at that moment, as the woman looked around her, she was actually loving her neighbors as herself. This place where this woman was living at that moment, this is where we need to live all the time. Where that woman's heart was at that moment, aware of those around her, compassionate about those around her, loving those around her, we need to be living in this place all the time. We shouldn't only be living there when we're reminded about it but rather loving others as ourselves, seeing others as God sees them. This should be a part of our makeup. It should be a part of who we are. Before we leave our house in the morning and we get dressed and we put on our jacket and our shoes and our, and our walks, we should also be putting on our lens of love, making sure that we are looking through eyes of kindness and compassion, unity and love. Eyes and hearts that allow us to see others as brothers and sisters and family, even if we've never met before. There is so much division in our country right now. Politics and social issues have not only divided us, but as a society, we seem to have forgotten how to simply be kind to one another. Lately, it seems that many people feel that because someone disagrees with us, we've been given permission to ridicule them and, and shout them down even sometimes getting physical, even violent. 
This is not how God intended for us to treat one another. When Christ told us to love one another as ourselves, he knew that if we simply did this, we couldn't help but be caring towards one another. Or as Paul said, love does no wrong to a neighbor. We get to choose. We get to choose which lens we put on before we walk out that door in the morning. We can choose to be looking at the world through eyes that are judgmental, through eyes that build boundaries, through eyes that look inward more than they look outward. Or we can choose to be looking at the world through eyes that embrace difference, through eyes that build bridges, through eyes that see God's world the way that God envisioned it. We get to choose. We get to to choose. So, let's choose love. Let's pray. Holy God, we thank you for your love. Help us to feel that love within us and allow us to share it with all that we meet. It's in your son's holy name we pray. Amen. But there's hope in His grace Together we give it away Why do we hesitate? One day might be too late We gotta share the gospel from our heart Cause there's no better place to start Love your neighbor love your neighbor as yourself we got to love one another love your neighbor as yourself come on church let's change the game show the power in jesus name love the lost and the hurtful too Remember who is living in you. Oh, love your neighbor. Love your neighbor as yourself. We got to love one another. Love your neighbor as yourself. Nobody knows when the day will come. Prophet or angel above.